Let's get started then. Um, so this is all about how CareerPilot can help schools meet the Gatsby benchmarks. So you can have CareerPilot at the centre of your careers programme, and then it'll help you uh, link with lots of Gatsby benchmarks. We're not saying it's the whole picture, but we're saying it's got a big contribution to make. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the bits of career pilot that actually map to the different Gatsby benchmarks and hopefully that will give you an opportunity to think about how you can use this information in any work you're doing around Gatsby. I'm sure you're familiar with um, the logo at the bottom which says that we're a winner uh, of a Career Development Institute award for being a, a good quality careers and employability website. So this is career pilot. Uh, I guess Michelle, you're familiar with it, but for other people, it's a free one-stop website that helps 13 to 19 year olds find out the information they need about all the pathways and jobs uh, related information so they can effectively plan their future study and work. We have a lot of positive feedback about the site and for us it's important to hear that it's helping students to change their minds about things, to get the information they need so they're well informed. And sometimes that means they're thinking now about university where they might not have been previously, for example. All the career pile of feedback is available in our advisor zone if you want to see more. It's co-funded by 20 universities and supported by six NCOPs across our region. And that means that it's free to use by all schools and colleges in the south of England. So today we're talking about how CareerPilot can support schools and colleges in meeting the Gatsby benchmarks. So these are the Gatsby benchmarks. I guess you already know of them. And I'm just going to show you how CareerPilot can help you meet some of these requirements. Currently, uh, on average, from um, the State of the Nation report from the Careers Enterprise Company, schools are meeting about two of these benchmarks on first assessment. So there's still quite a lot to be done in terms of helping schools and colleges to meet the Gatsby benchmarks. So the Careers Enterprise Company, as you will know, are taking a national lead on supporting schools and colleges in achieving the benchmarks. And to do that, they've got something called the Compass Toolkit, where schools can evaluate themselves against the Gatsby benchmarks, and then it pops out and tells you how many you've met. Uh, I won't ask you if you've completed it, Michelle, because it might not be relevant to your work role. They, schools can also, and colleges, add anything they're doing in terms of their careers programme onto a tracker tool. And those two things don't link together currently, but the plan is in the future they will. So if you add things to tracker, that will be added into your campus evaluation as well. And what we do is try to encourage schools, if they are using CareerPilot, to actually mention CareerPilot when they put in their campus assessment together and when they're using Tracker. And we've got a map that can help you have some language and ideas for how to do that. So CareerPilot is quite a big thing now. It's a student zone, an advisor zone, which has got teaching materials, parent zone, and reporting zone. So quite a lot of different parts of the website now. So it can be at the centre of a careers programme. You can use it across multiple year groups. Some schools now is choosing to start using it in year seven, just getting them to explore uh, ideas about different jobs, um, then building up to when they're making key decisions about GCSEs or about post-16 or post-18. So there really there's something for all year groups in Career Pilot. And this really fits with our Gatsby benchmarks about contributing to a stable careers program. So you can give people opportunities to find out about their choices um, and you can write that into your careers program, which obviously you'll be doing for Compass and publishing on your websites. So CareerPilot is one place for all the information about your choices. It's run by um, myself. I'm sorry, I should have introduced myself. I'm Sue Lewis and I head up CareerPilot. Um, I'm an ex-teacher and we've got ex uh other ex-teachers and qualified guidance people within our team. So all the information in CareerPilot is up to date and has actually been sourced from good quality other websites. So what we say to young people is don't Google things, you look at CareerPilot and then you should find information which is reliable, British, kept up to date. So we link to websites that are good quality on behalf of young people. Uh, so it's a website for everybody to use to get the information they need about the range of different pathways available. 
So the student area has two key parts, information, which is lots of information about different pathways, but the career tools. And the career tools are where young people can personalise their choices, so they can say what job sectors they're interested in. And this populates the reporting zones, so teachers can see what choices young people are making. And this very much fits with addressing the needs of individual pupils. If you know what choices young people are interested in, then you can look at that through the reporting zone, and then you can put activities on that meet the needs of those particular students. To be able to access the career tools, students will need to register, or if they've done that before, they will sign in, and then they will have access to all our career tools. So this is where they can do a skills map. They can record things they're interested in, like qualifications, job sectors, providers, or bookmark a section they like. And they can do the next steps quiz, which is about their barriers. And this all combines to create a report. So again, this is very much about you know what are the young people interested in, so you can actually look at that information and think about what you might do with it as a school. So that's our Gatsby benchmark about meeting individual needs. So some of the highlights of the site, we've got information on jobs and job profiles. We link to all the providers in the south of England. There's different starting points, activities to get young people started by age, or they might start by the choices they make available to them at 13, 14, or 16, or 18. There's a qualification planner, so they could kind of plot their route through the different levels of qualifications, or they could look at detailed information about a range of pathways. So, for example, higher education, there'll be a set of subsections, all the things you'd expect to see there about higher education, including deciding what course to do or finding, comparing courses. We link to short online university developed courses, which gives students a great starter in terms of finding out more about that subject, but also in terms of building up skills and, exp and, and experience, which they can quote on their personal statements. And if you drill down to the level of a page, this is our apprenticeship, higher apprenticeship page, you'll always be able to bookmark. So it's about, again, students personalising the things that they're particularly interested in, and they get added to their career tools. So there's a summary of what they're going to learn if they read on, and there's always lots of video stories, over a thousand video stories in the site that are mapped into all the different parts of Career Pilot. So the bit that um, is very popular uh, is the job sectors and the job information. And we've, you could search in different ways by sector, or you could start with a subject you love, or you could do a quiz. And this whole section really helps students to actually understand about uh, labour market information. Um, or again, it's about addressing the individual people need because they can think about what sectors they're interested in. And we're not arguing that uh, this is an encounter with an employer, but there are loads of video stories of employers talking about uh, work roles or employees talking about work roles. So it certainly would expand their knowledge about different sectors um, and they could use that information before they go on an encounter with an employer. So just to show you that quickly, we've got 19 sectors that subdivide to three subsections. So you can get right to the bit you're interested in, like animal. And then you have a landing page where you've got particular sections, including getting in, which tells them pathways into that particular um, job sector, and useful links, which gives them links to vacancy websites. There's, as I said, loads of video stories if they want to beef up their knowledge about different employment areas. The careerometer is here too, and this is where students can compare three different, up to three different jobs against each other. So this is useful in terms of uh, them begin to understand about jobs, how much you earn, and whether they're predicted to grow. So that labour market information comes in here too. But the bit that everybody loves are the job profiles. And there are 800 job profiles that come from the National Career Service, but they've given us the information, so they're embedded within Career Pilot. So if you clicked on a section on, and looked at job profiles, you'll see a whole selection of jobs. And what we're trying to do, again, is encourage students to tag the ones they like the look of, the sector, or they can tag jobs as well. So animal care worker, you can see straight away the different salary ranges between the jobs. And if you were to click on that job profile, you would see top line information about salary, working hours, but also labour market intelligence information, which links to Gatsby benchmarks, about whether it's predicted to grow. We show national here, but also links to some local information too. 
And if you drill on down through the job profile, uh, you could actually see what skills the job requires. And if you've done our skills profile, the students can see what they've got and what the job requires. So they can begin to see what the, the match is and what the mismatch might be. So they can actually start to develop those skills. All this is really useful in terms of preparing for work experience or preparing for an employer encounter. And again, they can bookmark, uh, tag in things. If they tag as they go the things they're interested in, then they will be saved for them. And often we will ask them to define whether they're just exploring, definitely interested. And through the reporting zone, you can begin to see what young people are interested in by how committed they are to it too. So that's quite useful for offering guidance or additional support. So if they've actually registered and they've had a play with uh, the job sectors, in the career tools under my job sectors, now they have their sectors, the jobs they've looked at, and the results of our job sector quiz. And all that is saved and can be accessed through a reporting zone. So in terms of the Gatsby benchmark about linking curriculum learning to careers, this is one that is actually a struggle for lots of schools at the moment. Uh, they're supposed to show subject teachers are supposed to be talking about how their subject will lead on to particular jobs or in the future. So this is a great tool for helping subject teachers to do exactly that with a minimum of effort. So we've got 20 academic subjects at the moment. Um, so I'm going to click on biology and what you'll see then is information about the skills that biology gives you but also a selection of jobs that would use biology just giving young people chances to explore those little bits. So as a subject teacher you could just do this maybe once a term, once a year, whatever it might be, and explore a few jobs, look at salaries, look at entry requirements. And if you scroll down down through the page, you'll find some MOOCs that uh, would be useful to do if you're interested in this particular um, subject. But also examples of apprenticeships that relate to that subject, or college courses and university degrees in the south of England. We've just got a selection from different universities just to give students an opportunity to see the wide range of things they could go on to do if they've got passion for biology. So that could be run by a subject teacher, um, even if it's as little as once a year. That would really help um, young people to see how subjects lead on to particular things. I would certainly help with GATS before. Um, the job quiz, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, we have a job sector quiz that asks students what they're interested in doing in work and then shows them the sectors they might want to explore further. So in terms of individual need, that can be a quite nice place to start if they're really not sure. So all the things I've shown you so far, uh, if the students have signed in, they complete the career tools, then in the reporting zone you can see all that information. So this is again where you can look at the individual needs of students. So in the reporting zone you can look at reports by group or by individual. And here's an example of a report. So for your, uh, your 11 in this case, um, job sector choices, I can see what job sectors young people are definitely interested in or just exploring. So that might help me to see there's quite a lot of students interested in business and admin and finance. So if we get an employer in, maybe we could target that employer conversation at those students. And you could use it, this in a range of different ways. And it's all downloadable too if you want to create spreadsheets. So um, moving on now to talk about our skills map. And that is a good way of helping students prepare for any encounters with an employer or a work experience or any encounters with further and higher education because they can begin to get an idea of what their skills are. But also when they come back from their encounters, they can record what they did and what skills it gave them. So uh, our skills map, we've developed that because when you ask kids where they've got skills, they struggle to give you an answer, they're not really sure. So what we do in our, our skills quiz is ask them what they've done already in life, learning and work. And then based on their answers, we tell them what skills they probably developed or used when they did those particular things. Those skills are then in our skills bank and uh, it shows you how many examples you generated through the quiz but then keep adding their own. So this is a good way if you're preparing for work experience that employer is going to ask you what skills you got at least you've got a little bit of a list. Organisation and planning I've got you know lots of examples of that uh, and I, you know it's top of my list so that's something they could be talking about. So if they want to add an example then that will 
uh, look like this. So they can say, I've just been on a work experience at um, Tesco's, and they can identify what skills that particular activity gave them. And then their skills would be added to the skills bank. So these will be examples they've added themselves. So they can use it as a, a kind of reflection on the encounters they have with work experience, employers, and FE and HE. When they come to apply, if they apply for work experience, they can use this, or when they apply in later, they can say what they're applying for and think of the skills they most should be talking about in regards to that particular job or course. And then they can see all their examples to help them get started preparing their CV or personal statement or for an interview. Students can also look at all the providers we have in the south of England, universities, colleges, uh, quite a lot of other training providers, not all of them, all schools, schools with six forms and schools without. So you can search on a map or on a list and they click on a provider. Schools would just go straight to their websites, but all the other providers have their own kind of page and there's quick links to different parts of their website so they can find out more in a very quick way. So an orange circle is a full-time courses. So if they click there, they'll be able to see Bath Spa University's full-time courses. So again, we're not we're not saying this substitutes a visit to an FE or a HE institution, but it certainly is a good way to explore what they might offer and find out a bit more about them, including their open days or money support or whatever it might be. And again, they can add these providers to their career tools under my provider. So I mentioned the career tools um, quite a bit. So this is where students are personalizing their choices, and that all leads to a report. Um, in the report, you can also add comments. So once you're in the reporting zone, if you're a guidance advisor or a tutor, you can actually uh, have, a, have a conversation with the students, and then you can record the outcome of that guidance interview, including some action points. And they can be viewed by the student and other people in the school with access to that particular student. And you can have multiple comments. So it could be the guidance advisor, and then the tutor might go in after that. And they're all attributed to the person who wrote them and the date they were written. And what we're doing now um, is using this a lot um, to support personal guidance. We're using Career Pilot in quite a lot of schools now as a preparation for guidance. And then the guidance person can actually look at their reports before they start their interview. So they've got quite a lot of information to start that guidance call for uh, conversation. And then they can record the outcomes of that. And that's visible to everybody who's got access to that student. So that really meets, um, that, that helps to meet Gatsby 8 and offers a bit of a process to support the guidance uh, interview. Every year, the report moves up with the students. We take a snapshot on August 31st. So students could have multiple versions of their report if they've been using it from year seven, for example. We try to encourage schools to use Career Pilot uh, as a progressive program. So in terms of that stable careers program, there's something for everybody in Career Pilot. And what we've done here is actually come up with suggested activities for different year groups. There's, this goes up from year seven to year 13. And then we've got um, some for year one vocational students at a college and year two vocational students at a college. So it's just the kind of five things that are really worth you doing on Career Pilot. And they all meet what you should be thinking about your age or the decisions you should be making. And these are all accessible through our advisor Zoom, which is just on our homepage. Those activities are also accessible to students through the homepage, through Find Activities for Your Age. And then they could click here and just do the sort of five activities. Here's an example. So they've got links, they've got diagram to show exactly what you should do. So just five key things to do by age. In the advisor zone, we have a lot of resources to support teachers who are using Career Pilot. Uh, you can access that from the top bar of the homepage. That's our advisor zone. So you'll find resources that uh, would help deliver those introductory activities. So here's an example. There's a presentation already set up. So if you're delivering those five key activities for year 11, there's a presentation with an introduction, then they do the activities, and then there's a plenary. And there's one for every year group. 
Um, we also have things here like LMI in a box where we have um, information about the sectors and how they're predicted to grow across different sub-regions of the southwest, less in the southeast, uh, south um, sun area at the moment on Frey Michelle, but we have got them for the southwest because they come from the LEPs and the local careers companies. One thing, oh, that didn't look so well when I transferred it, but um, coming soon, then they're just about done now. We've got a PSHE program for all your groups that is about five weeks with lots of activities using Career Pilot as a core, and they map to Gatsby as well. Um, so year seven, there's a lot about just exploring jobs and begin to understand why jobs grow and why jobs might decline. You know, and the, the idea there's lots of new jobs coming on board because for them in year seven students, you know, quite lightly, by the time they're in the working life, a lot of jobs will have changed and be automated. So you need to start becoming aware of that in a very gentle way. So just, uh, I mentioned the report, it looks like this. And you can also obviously add guidance comments. And as we've said before, it moves up every year. It's also the parent zone. Uh, so in terms of Gatsby, you know, it's a stable program, but it's actually parents are really key in that as well. They understand what you're doing. They can access this information so they can support young people. So they'll have a set of, uh, it, it mirrors the, the main site. So choices rating is one section. And then there's key questions that parents would like to know the answers to. So if you haven't got access report and zone already, then you can do it um, by applying to us through the advisor zone. And then you complete a data sharing agreement and then we send you a password and you can issue passwords to other staff. If you're an NCOP, in an NCOP like you are, Michelle, then your NCOP can apply to have access to reporting zone. And then any school that's completed the data sharing agreement that says that you can see their, their students, you will be able to access them through that. So there's lots of free things that can help you get started with Career Pilot. We've got free training for schools, usually by webinar, um, if you're a long way from us, uh, or face-to-face -face if you're quite close. There's free promotional materials, lots of free webinars, and you can have free access to reporting zone. And all those things can be requested through our advisor zone. We also encourage schools and colleges to become super users, and that means just hitting four criteria, which just show you begin to embed Career Pilot. You can request our free materials. You have a link on your school or college website to Career Pilot, and you have over 100 active users per academic year. And you've told parents about the site, or you've requested access to reporting zone, preferably both of them, but we'll accept one. And then if you become a super user, you get a poster, and that helps you to show that you are actually using Career Pilot to support Gatsby and the statutory, um, the, the statutory requirements for careers. And you get one free set of additional promotional materials too. So if you need a sample login, if you want to play with the career tools as a student, don't put your own email in. Save that for the reporting zone. So the way to do that is to click on register, fill in the details just like a student would. But when it comes to email, put your first name, surname at normail.com. And then if you want to see the post-16 skills map, choose a post-16 group or a pre-16 group. Don't put yourself in your own school or college. Put yourself in training school. And then you'll be able to play with the career tools um, and without actually affecting any live data. Oh, we've got a bit of... Hi, Paul. You've just joined the webinar. Um, we are quite a long way through it. I hope you can see me and hear me. If you can, could you type something in the chat pane? Hi, great. So I'm afraid, Paul, we, we've rattled through it a bit because it's just been myself and Michelle. Um, there will be a recording of this presentation, so I will send that out to you. Um, Hopefully, you'll just get a little bit at the end now, which is almost the summary, but um, the webinar will help you. And I think my colleague Debbie is in touch with you and is going to come out and do some training with your school. Uh, is that right?
Yeah, I know what it's like. And that's fine. Well, let me just finish off and then I'll make sure you get a recording. Okay. Um, you could have a little play, but I think what we'll do is make sure you've got the log on so you can have a little play. Paul, I'll just go over this slightly because you can play as a student by creating a sample login. So the way that works is you go to careerpilot.org.uk, click on register, fill in your personal details, but don't use your own email address. Uh, just use your first name, surname at nomail.com and I'll create like a dummy login. If you want to see the post-16 skills map, choose your 12 or 13. Or if you want to see the pre-16, uh, then choose a, a younger year, year group. Don't put yourself in your own school. Put yourself in training school. And then you can play and it's not going to affect any live data. Okay, so Career Pilot has been mapped to the Career Statric Guidance and Gatsby. And I'm going to send this out to you so you can see how it maps. Um, and it is a good thing to, if you're going to be using Career Pilot, you can actually then be mentioning it uh, when you complete your Compass Assessment Tool. And you can add it to Tracker as well, which are the Career Enterprise Company tools that you are supposed to be using. Okay, and the two things work quite well together. I've also done a kind of visual map um, which just shows against each of the benchmark which bits of career pilot um, specifically help to meet that particular Gatsby benchmark. So I've done that for all those. So we'll send you that visual record as well. So hopefully through the presentation, I'm sorry Paul, you've only just joined us, you will see how you can actually use Gatsby um, career pilot to help you meet Gatsby. So I'll just stop now and see if there's any questions you want to ask before we wrap it up and then we'll um, make sure you get a recording of the presentation anyway. I can see you typing, but sometimes it takes a little while to come through. Yeah, do get in touch, Paul, uh, if you want to chat to me or, or Debbie. Yeah, recording be sent to everybody. Oh, yeah, <laughs> these things happen, Michelle. That's no problem. Um, I mean, hopefully you can see there's lots of overlap between Career Pilot and what Gatsby's trying to achieve. Um, and it is free, so it's well worth uh, having to think about. But, yeah, do get back to me if um, you need to know any additional information.